Willie Clarkson. William Barry, Willie Clarkson, 31 March 1860, 13 October 1934, was a British theatrical costume designer and wig maker. Career. Clarkson's father had been making wigs since 1833. Willie Clarkson was educated in Paris but left school at the age of 12 to assist in his father's business. He took over the business and the death of his father in 1878 and expanded into providing theatrical costumes and makeup. His company became very successful, supplying most of the London West End theatres for five decades. He also sold wigs to the public for non-theatrical wear. A 1900 article in the theatrical newspaper The Ear stated that not to know Willie Clarkson and his doings is to be out of the theatrical world, for Willie Clarkson, with a bright and easy though sometimes anxious manner, is ever hovering before and behind. Scarcely any big production in London is undertaken without the aid of the owner of the Wellington Street Wiggeries. Starting in 1889, Clarkson's company supplied costumes and wigs used in the amateur dramatic productions of Queen Victoria's family and circle. He provided the wigs for the princesses who were attending the fancy dress Devonshire House Ball of 1897 and visited Buckingham Palace beforehand to arrange their hair. Edward Roman VII appointed him royal periquer and costumer. In 1905, he had new premises built at 41 minus 43 Warder Street, Soho. Facts still present in the building record that the foundation stone was laid by Sarah Benhart and the coping stone by Sir Henry Irving. In 1910, Clarkson helped disguise the members of Horace de Vercoe's dreadnought hacks, including a young Virginia Woolf as an Abyssinian royal delegation. This is recorded Adrian Stevens' 1936 account of the incident. During World War I, he supplied realistic papier mache heads to Hesketh Hesketh Pritchard, a pioneer of sniping in the British Army. The heads were used in the trenches on the Western Front. A dummy head mounted on a stick would be raised over the lip of a British trench. If a German sniper shot it, the bullet holes would reveal the direction the bullet came from and the location of the German. In the 1920s, Clarkson was the owner of the Duchess Theatre in Catherine Street. At its peak, his company had over 100 employees and had 50,000 costumes in stock. Clarkson was a well-known figure in theatrical circles. He attended every West End production's first night and knew many of the leading figures such as Marie Lloyd, Herbert Baybone Tree, Dim Nelly Melba and Lily Langtry. Send photographs of famous clients covered the walls of his shops. During his life, there were widespread rumours of Clarkson's homosexuality, at that time a crime under the Criminal Law Amendment Act 1885. A public lavatory in Soho's dancey place was known locally as Clarkson's Cottage. Criminal Associations Clarkson claimed to have had among his clients the murder Holly Harvey Crippen and his wife and victim Corinne Corotena, as well as the murder Ronald True. Clarkson also made disguises for detectives from Scotland Yard and helped police catch the murder Herbert John Bennett, who had ordered wigs from him. A long-standing acquaintance of Clarkson was William Cooper Hobbs, they first met in 1886. Hobbs was initially a solicitor's clerk, but became a notorious, convicted blackmailer. In 1924, Clarkson helped Hobbs attempt to flee Britain when he was facing serious criminal charges. But the attempt failed and Hobbs was arrested at Gravesend while attempting to board a ferry to Rotterdam. The police found Hobbs was carrying £1,500 sterling in cash. This money was suspected to be criminal proceeds, but Clarkson produced a document that claimed it was his money that he had lent to Hobbs, and it was handed over to him. Hobbs was convicted and sentenced to two years in prison for attempting to blackmail Harry Singh for £150,000 sterling. On 5 September 1931, a fire broke out in the basement of Clarkson's Warder Street shop but was quickly extinguished by seven fire engines. Clarkson received £26,000 sterling from his insurers in September 1933. There was a fire at another of Clarkson's properties, a warehouse in Ramley's Place, Soho. Clarkson made an insurance claim of £36,748 sterling but his insurers refused to make a payment. Sir William Crocker, solicitor acting for the insurance companies, began an investigation and gathered enough evidence to prosecute Clarkson for making fraudulent claims, but Clarkson died in 1934, before the prosecution could take place. In March 1937, a consortium of insurance companies and Lloyd's underwriters filed two suits against Clarkson's estate. Their purpose was to recover money paid to Clarkson when he was alive for fire insurance claims. One of those giving evidence was a man called Leopold Harris. In 1933, Harris had received a 14-year prison sentence as the ringleader of a large gang of arsonists who set fires for the purpose of insurance fraud. He testified that he had been paid £775 sterling to organise the setting of the 1931 fire in Clarkson's shop and that one of the men involved had also started the 1933 warehouse fire. Harris also bribed the attending member of the London Salvage Corps to ignore evidence that valuable goods supposedly destroyed had been removed before the fire started. 
the plaintiffs won their case and were awarded £26,174 sterling. During the trial, it emerged that six other fires and one gas explosion had been reported by Clarkson at his premises in 1895, 1898, 1901, 1910, 1915, 1918 and 1924. De. On a night of 13 October 1934, Clarkson was found unconscious on his bedroom floor with a gash on his forehead. He was attended by Bertrand Dawson, the royal family's physician, but never regained consciousness. The circumstances of his death were considered sufficiently suspicions that an autopsy on his body was performed by the prominent pathologist Sir Bernard Spilsbury, although he found no conclusive evidence of foul play. Clarkson's funeral was at St Paul's, Covent Garden and he was buried in a modest grave in the Actors Acre in Brookwood Cemetery in Surrey, England. Clarkson's will, dated 1929, left the bulk of his estate to his long-standing associate William Cooper Hobbs. However, the will was contested by Max Brzezinski and his daughter who possessed a 1931 will in which Clarkson left his estate to them. The probate court decided in their favour in July 1935. The matter was investigated by the police detective Leonard Burt and in March 1938, Hobbs and a former solicitor, Edmund O'Connor, went on trial, accused of together forging the earlier will. Both were convicted, Hobbs was sentenced to five years in prison and O'Connor to seven. Neither party in the will dispute ultimately profited as Clarkson's estate was made insolvent by the successful claim against it by the fire insurers in 1937. However, his shop in Warder Street continued to trade until it closed in 1940. Legacy a London County Council blue plaque unveiled in 1966 commemorates Clarkson at his former shop in Warder Street. The building retains a clock above the entrance, advertising it as the business premises of a costumer and pair queer. In 1974, the building was grade Roman II listed. Since the 1980s, it has been occupied by the well-known one key Chinese restaurant. Clarkson's ability at creating disguises is referenced in a number of novels. These include Sex Rome as the Golden Scorpion 1919, The Clockwork Man by Edwin Vincent Odell 1923, an early science fiction novel featuring a time traveling cyborg, Rain set in Hutchison's Colonel Grant's Tomorrow 1931, Black August 1934 by Dennis Wheatley, and Spy 1935 by Bernard Newman. Examples of Clarkson's wigs are in the collection of the Victoria and Albert Museum, including one possibly worn by the dancer Adele Ingenay. The museum also has a complete Harlequin costume supplied by his company that is worn on stage by Harold Chapin. The Museum of London has a Clarkson horsehair wig that was made specially for the famous clown, Whimsical Walker, and another that is claimed to have been worn on stage by Sir Hemi Irving. Jack the Ripper Suspect Clarkson has been named as a potential suspect in the 1888 Whitechapel murders attributed to Jack the Ripper. This theory was first introduced and explored in the award winning 2019 short film The Wigmaker of Wellington Street. Gallery. File Willie Clarkson 1861-1934 Theatrical Wigmaker lived and died here too. Chippy G. The Blue Plaque erected in 1966 by London County Council at 41-43 Water Street File Willie Clarkson Foundation Stone. Chippy G. Pack commemorating the foundation stone laid by Sarah Bernard in 1904 File Willie Clarkson Coping Stone. Chippy G. Pack commemorating the coping stone laid by Hemi Irving in 1905.